How could you not like to bench? This is the king of the chest exercise. He's going to disagree, but you got to believe me. Believe Coach Greg. All right, guys. If you want to hear some real science-backed knowledge on this, the bench press for me is going to get a D grade. D. Coach Greg, and I'm here with Eric Janicki. I said his name right. And we're going over the best exercises to do for your body parts. We're giving them A, B, C, D, or F ratings. And so stay tuned. We are going to have different opinions. Am I right? Is he right? We'll let you decide. You ready? Let's do this. Let's get started. Everybody wants to know how to get the biggest titties possible. And so we are going to give you all of the secrets and rate your favorite exercises from A to F based on how good they are for bodybuilding specifically. You excited for this? I am. And I can tell we're going to have different theories on this because we train chest together. We got to start with it, guys. We got to start with it. The barbell bench press. A plus. This is the best chest exercise you could ever do by a land mile. Don't listen to this guy. You got to be bench pressing. Bench press harder than last time. You want some titties, you got to bench press. How could you not like to bench? This is the king of the chest exercise. He's going to disagree, but you got to believe me. Believe Coach Greg. All right, guys. If you want to hear some real science-backed knowledge on this, the bench press for me is going to get a D grade. D for bodybuilding purposes. I'm going to break this down so you meatheads can actually understand why this is a D exercise. Number one (laughs) is we are trying to maximize hypertrophy at the lowest risk profile. How many people, raise your hand, in this room have hurt yourself in some capacity bench pressing? I have no pec tears. Have you hurt yourself in any capacity bench pressing? I had a brief stint where it was a couple days. Okay, both of us, both of us, a little bit, a little bit. Everybody you know in the gym, it's like you've either been injured bench pressing or you are going to get injured bench pressing. It's kind of like an inevitability. Yeah. I think there's a few reasons for this. Number one is that when you, it's like the number one, like ego num- numerical driven exercise. I literally, I'm a bodybuilder and people don't really understand that. So when I go to the grocery store, let go to the checkout line. Hey bro, how much you bench press? Walk my dog. Hey bro, how much you bench press? The lady boy I slept with in Thailand. Hey bro, how much you bench press? So That's the thing, man. It's everybody wants to know how much you bench press. So are you going to go into the gym and literally say, you know what? I'm going to do some hypertrophic bench press today and do a six second negative and two second pause. Like, no, you're going to be like, let me go heavier than last time because I want to tell my bro that I bench 405 for the first time. And you're not going to focus on good form. You're not going to focus on slow negatives. You're not going to focus on the things that actually drive hypertrophy. You're going to focus on getting that top end weight. If you guys are going for a powerlifting competition, do bench press. You have to do it. It's part of the lift. It's part of the criterion, unless you're just doing, let's say a deadlift only. But if you are doing like, let's say a big three powerlifting competition, you have to lift with the obviously lifts that you are going to be doing in competition at a higher level at the high levels of strength. So, but if you're trying to step on a bodybuilding stage, it's not an exercise. I think you actually need at all. I stopped bench pressing eight years ago because I injured both sides of my pec and my pec development since that time has been like exponentially more. I can't bench nearly what I could in college, but my chest growth is so much better because I'm focusing on movement patterns with more stretch, more hypertrophic effects affect more time under tension and more peak contraction than the bench press provides. So the second big thing is it's a limited range of motion, right? So when I'm doing the bench, it's from here to here. There's a lot of other exercises that can induce a lot higher range of motion, specifically flies or even a machine press where you can dig the handles behind you. They literally designed something called a camber bar that allows you to go deeper in your rep because they understood that you're not going to get the most hypertrophic effect from a bar. The last thing is ergonomics. Your, your pinkies are going to track your, your elbows are going to track your pinkies from an ergonomics perspective. It just is what it is. So they've shown that when you bench press, your elbows are going to bow out, especially when you're tired. Even when you arch your back, when those elbows drive out, you're going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on your bicep, on your front delt and your pec minor. That's why there's so many injuries from bench pressing because ergonomically speaking, we should be pressing from here with that nice 45 degrees driving out, squeezing. Why do you think that these scientists at hammer strength and they put 
hundreds of millions of dollars into these machines that they sell all over the country. Look at the handles. Why are the handles not like this, guys? Why on the incline press are they not like this? They're like this for a cook reason, because ergonomically speaking, it allows us to pin our shoulders back, get proper recruitment through the chest and not put our chest in a very high risk profile. How many times have people that you know said, oh, I tore my chest on a hammer strength press. If you are trying to be a bodybuilder, stop lifting like a power lifter, stop lifting with the ego, leave it at the door. I think there's so much more to be said that somebody that can leave their ego at the door and lift with lesser weight and have somebody look at him and say, oh, look at that guy. He doesn't even bench press. That takes more courage than me than somebody that literally feels the need to buckle under the pressure and go and lift as heavy as possible just so they can tell their friends that they have a bigger bench press max. Like grow up. If you want to actually be better at the sport you're performing, start doing movement patterns that are actually efficacious to your end result goal. And so great points made, especially about the chances of injury. And I know another guy I spoke to, Irv Skalevsky, he's third place in the Mr. Olympia. He doesn't bench press anymore. I think that one of the reasons that I personally like the bench press so much is because of the fact that it's a number that you either get or you don't get. Very easy to progressive overload. But he's right. If you don't want to get injured, and there are other exercises, you don't need the bench press. You don't need the squat. You don't need any specific exercise, even the deadlift. You can build the same physique or even better without it. Personally, I love the bench press so much. That's what got me into the sport. I don't think I would have been the bodybuilder I am had I not done the powerlifting movements because I just love them. But like guys like the Trend Twins who are lifting super heavy or Sam Sulik, these guys are eventually going to get injured and they're not going to make their progress. And so, as he said, leave your ego at the door. That is much more impressive. If you can bench press 500 pounds, but you don't, it's more impressive than just putting on the most weight you can and throwing it up. And then what happens? You get a Heck tear. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, guys. I'm not saying don't bench press if you love doing it, but try adding a negative to it. Try using the camber bar to get more range of motion because it's the that's the bar. If you guys don't know, it's it's literally bent right before where you're gonna hold it because that allows it to basically clear your chest and you can dig the elbows down deeper, get more stretch to the chest. More stretch equals more hypertrophy, more stretch me hypertrophy, and more motor recruitment and more growth. Literally, it's science. Look it up. So if you're going to bench press, start using these other modalities to help to have the bench press be used to your favor as opposed to just like chasing numbers, which is not going to help you have a bigger chest. And it's probably going to lead to more injuries and more tightness in your front delts and disable you from doing a lot of other exercise patterns, which are really efficacious. My advice, if you like the bench press the way I do, pause the weight. That's immediately going to lighten the load. You're going to have less chance of injury and do higher reps. You don't need to do five reps, three or a max. There's no point in doing that. Try 10, try 15, a lot safer. I'm going to call out Coach Greg right now because earlier, oh, we can replay the clip. You said you like the bench because you can go heavier than last time. I love the bench. So, I set records in the bench. But now you're telling people to go lighter and do pauses. So which is it? Well, see, here's the thing. You can set a record for one, two, three, four. I literally, since I was 13 years old, kept records for every weight in the gym. It was 135, 145, all the way up as I got older. For example, 500 pounds. How many times can I do it? Had records for everything. I had a big chart. I still keep track of that. Now, no, I can no longer bench press though. So how long could I do it? I started at 10. I got till 44. Now I'm injured. Perhaps maxing out for powerlifting did that. But remember, you don't have to be a powerlifter. You don't have to go for one max. And when I trained, I literally would do 10 reps plus almost all the time, unless I'm training for a meet specifically, then I would lift a lot, well, a lot heavier at that point. All right. Well, I appreciate the candor. I love that we had different grades on this. I got fired up. I know he got fired up. Let's get on to the next exercise because I think we might be on a little bit more of the same page as we go. Let's go with Smith machine, either incline or flat press. Smith me. I'll let you start this one. I'm going to rate the Smith machine press as much higher than the barbell bench press or barbell incline for the reason of just safety. So I'm going to give it a C. The only reason I'm not going to give it either an A or a B is simply because of the limited range of motion, just because like with that bar and also you run into that same problem with the with the pinky tracking. So your elbows are gonna track your pinky. So that's why the, like hammer strength or dumbbell or things like that are so efficacious because they allow for that really nice ergonomic hand position and they track in. So with the Smith machine, you're pressing directly up. You're losing a lot of that peak contraction. Because when you say, when somebody says flex your chest, right? You don't go like this. No. No, you go like this. 
that's the reason most muscular in bodybuilding is here. It's not here. <laughs> so if you're pressing out, you're losing a lot of that peak contraction. So that's why I love like a hammer strike that actually angles inward. Um, that's another big reason. The last big reason I wouldn't rate it usually uh, an A or B is just because it's another machine where people will have that same problem with chasing weight, not using as many negatives, but it is a lot safer to do pause reps and negatives. So if you guys aren't utilizing the Smith machine to do more negatives, to do more pauses, I would highly recommend that you do so. For me, I'm giving it a C. I don't enjoy this exercise much. And for me, I don't like the way it forces me to push in the line that it's actually dictated to do so. I don't have the free ability to move the weight where I want. I find it awkward. And if I'm not gonna do the bench press, which I love way more, I'm thinking, why not pick one of those machines where I can, as you said, squeeze together. So I don't like that exercise much, although it's a great exercise. Still giving it a C rating. I think there's far better exercise to choose from. Let's go the pec deck fly. So machine fly is kind of the colloquial term. I'm gonna give it a B plus rating. It's not, I, and this is why. I love lifting heavier weights. I wanna feel that weight in my in my hands. I wanna know that I'm lifting heavy when I'm doing a, a crossover or anything. I just don't think it's building as much muscle because it's not as heavy of a weight. I mean, it may not be scientific. It might not be this and that, but I really don't think that great, if you had great, two bodies, great. me and you two, but we're twins. If I do the bench press and I do these harder exercises and you just do crossovers and pec decks, I don't think you're building as much muscle as the guy that has a heavier weight and it's easier progressive overload. Not that it's bad. I think you should do both. Okay. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to... I can't wait to see what he's going to say. All right. Machine fly. So we're talking about the one where the handles are out in front of you. I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. I think flies are an extremely powerful movement pattern for building bigger packs, more voluminous packs. There's a few reasons for that. One, you're putting your packs on island pressing. You can utilize your lats, your triceps, your front delt. There's a lot of ancillary movers in a pressing movement. So there's a lot of guys that bench press a shit ton of weight, but have a small chest because they actually press mainly with their lats. Most power lifters will even tell you and admit that the heaviest bench pressers that use like the squat suits what, or the, you know, bench suits and shirts and yeah. bench shirts and all that, they'll, they'll admit like I'm pressing with my lats. I'm not pressing with my chest. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways that you can actually press utilizing other muscle groups with flies. You are putting your chest on an Island and with the machine fly, it's a very safe way to get a huge stretch of the back of your rep dig in big peak contraction through the middle of your rep. And I think that there's no reason that you can't use heavy weights on flies. I stack out the machine and I will get a six second negative. I will milk that stretch. I'll get that stretch medium hypertrophy. I will open up. I will hold that length in position for two seconds with the whole stack on a pec deck fly, 300 pounds. Now, I think another disadvantage that this guy can train, he's an animal. I watched it. He's doing sets like all out for two straight minutes. I don't think most people can train as intensely as you. I think most people would need like a heavier weight, lighter weps to really push themselves to failure. I think you take the average person on the pack deck or flies or any of this, they're not going to push as hard as they should. You can. I don't think everyone can. And so basically we're comparing like an isolation exercise versus like, let's say barbell curls versus like a dumbbell curl. I think most people are going to get better gains from the barbell curl just because they're able to push harder, work through it. Like it's less mentally straining to do, for example, a bench press for 10 reps than really con concentrating with the slower eccentric. That takes a lot of work and you, you, you I, I, obviously you can do it. I don't know if the average person could get the same gains with the pec deck crossover as, for example, the bench press. Yeah, I'll admit I'm an absolute lunatic. Like two minute sets. I've done hard. Yeah, like people like I'll do leg press sets that last like three minutes long with like 10 plates on each side. And people are like, what is wrong with you? Like, are you Cook. psychopath? <laughs> like it's hard. I'm literally rolling on the floor after my leg press sets because it's just I'm in so much pain from all that hypoxicity that I built up with crazy long sets. It's holding at the bottom. So I think that, yes, there is a component of my style of training that you need to lock in and really be ready to like embrace the burn. But at the end of the day, what I'm talking about is like what I know scientifically to be the most efficacious and a pack fly with good control, huge stretch. It allows you to hold in that length and position, which has been proven, especially for chest and back and quad specifically to induce a ton of hypertrophy in that stretch position under load. So the other big consideration that, and we did some chest yesterday, 
with the fly movements, you're, it's almost therapeutic in the sense that when we opening up every single set, the chest opens up more and more. We're actually going to allow ourselves to be healthier for longer because if we can train in those longer modalities, you don't have to do a ton of mobility work because if you're just pressing here short and really, really heavy, you have to take time to mobilize during the week. For me, I'd rather grit through those super long stretches and those sets you're talking about then have to sit down and mobilize for 40 minutes three times a week and really open up my chest with you know like a massage gun or a supernova or something like that i'm just not going to do it i've twin babies i run three businesses i'm doing youtube now it's not going to happen so for me it'll if i train i always say train long to remain long and if i train in these lengthened positions and i hold these stretches it's going to allow me for more longevity, I don't have to mobilize as much and it's going to keep that tissue nice and healthy and it's going to maximize motor recruitment because I'm hitting all the way from that pec minor and that stretch position all the way into that inner chest in that fully contracted position. So I think it's a really great way to maximize your, your potential volume wise for chest. And I think basically my advice would be to do a bit of both. Like I've got the bench press is a high rating. He's got a different exercise, perhaps higher. If you do them both, you're getting the best of both worlds. You can actually have that fun. Perhaps you want to do that 10 rep max in the gym and the bench, but you also get that flexibility, range of motion increase, and you can train like him more uh, like really hard sets for a minute plus the time under tension. You get the best of everything. And so why not do that? All right, hope you learned something. And then don't forget, please go subscribe to Eric Janicki. You can follow him on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. He's hilarious, highly intelligent. Look at the size of this guy. So please go and check him out. Got to give him over a million followers. Check it out, subscribe right now.